We're going to talk about lesson 2.6 today, so take out the handout that uh, came along with this video. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a piecewise function, and what we have here is really three pieces, three pieces of, uh, of a graph. So we're going to graph y or f of x equals x plus 2. That's one piece of a graph. And then we're going to graph y equals 2x plus 5. And then lastly, we'll graph y equals negative x plus 1. And here's what makes these things important. We're going to graph y equals x plus 2 only from x is less than 0. So from this axis back to the left, that's where we're graphing uh, x plus 2. Everybody in here can graph y equals x plus 2. It has a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1, but we're just graphing one piece of it. That's why they call it a piecewise function. And then we're going to graph the 2x plus 5 from, again, from x equals 0, so again, on the y-axis, to x equals 2. So in between those two green lines is where we will graph this guy. And then lastly, from this x is greater than 2 to the right, we will graph negative x plus 1. So if I asked you to graph them individually, I don't think anybody would have a problem plotting positive 2, applying the slope of 1. But what we're going to do is we're going to go from uh, x equals 0 backwards. So there's a few ways you can do it. You could do it with an xy chart, or we could do it with a with a um, with just how we talked about it. So I'm going to go up to y-intercept of 2, and I'm putting an open circle. I'm putting an open circle because we want to, uh, because we, I'm going to make this a little darker. We want to have it not included, because look at x is less than 0. So from there, I would go up one, right one, up one, right one, but that's not the direction I want to go, so I'm going to go the opposite direction. Down one, left one is still a slope of one. And then when I connect the dots and I draw my line, I go from here, open circle, on back, and it'll run out there forever. Um, so that's the first piece. We've got that one. That one's done. We've got that one done. It makes a better check mark if you go like this. That one's done. Next piece, in the middle. When I have these ones in the middle, I usually like to just plug values in. I know I have a y-intercept of 5, and if I put 0 in there, I get 0 plus 5. So 0, 5, notice that's greater than or equal to. x is greater than or equal to. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and put a dot. And then I'm going to put a 2 in, and I know this is linear, so 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9 -er. So I'm going to... 4, 9 -er. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Kind of ran out of room, but that's okay. Uh, uh, so I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're going to be like up here. I know that's not ideal. That's the way it goes. Um, and again, it's closed circle because it's, because it's included. So I'm going to uh, connect those two dots. Connect those two dots. And I'll go from here to here. Let me move this thing out of the way. Okay, so I just have from x equals 0 to x equals 2, I just have that portion of the line. If I had an entire line of 2x plus 5, it would go all the way there, but it doesn't. So we do only want it from x equals 0 to x equals 2. And then the last one, notice I have a y-intercept of 1, but it doesn't do me any good to plot that y-intercept of 1 because I want to start at 0. Oh, that's new. I want to start at 0. Let me get that back where it was. I'm starting at 2, and I'm going forever to the right. So if I put a 2 in here, so it's kind of like the old xy chart. Put a 2 in for x. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Put a 3 in for x. Negative 3 plus 1 is uh, negative 2. So if I go to 2, negative 1, again, open circle because it's not equal to, and we can see that if I get rid of that guy. And then I can apply the slope or graph 3, negative 2, but it's down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. And we've got a line, and I can go from here. I've got a line somewhere in there. Uh, got a line. 
from here all the way down. So there's my three pieces of my graph. Again, taking them one at a time, it's not a big deal to graph them. But all we're doing is we're sectioning off the graph, and we did from the pink line to the left was this guy, from the pink line to the green line was this guy, and from the yellow line onto the right was this guy here. When they ask you for the domain and the range of these things, my domain here is still going to be um, uh, all real numbers because notice I'm less than zero and then here I am zero to two, two included, and then I pick up two again, all reals. Uh, you got to watch out a little bit on the range on these ones. The range on these ones, obviously, I'm going down to negative infinity, so I'm going from this positive two. Notice that's the top value there, so I could say my range are uh, set of all y's such that y is less than 2, that's that value there, and then I pick up again up here and I'm from 5 to 9, if you remember that was 9, so I can go comma, y is greater than or equal to 5, less than or equal to 9. -er. And there we have it. Now, let's try another one. Um, where again they're going to ask us to graph, and this is very similar with, with the less than or equal to zero, and then we're from zero to two, and then we're greater than or equal to two. The first thing I see here is uh, this would be the same as one-third x, y equals one-third x. So that's where x is less than or equal to zero. So we're going to start by graphing, uh, I have a y-intercept of zero, and notice it's included. It's included because of the or equal to, and then I'm going to go from there, and I'm going to go a slope of one-third. Now, the natural reaction is to go up one, right three. But again, I only want x values less than zero. So I'm going to go down, or excuse me, um, I'm going to go down one, left three. And we could put negative one in here as well, and negative two, and that's negative three. Negative three divided by three is one. Down one, left three, and we're there. So let's graph this guy. I think I can get an arrow out of this deal. Uh, let's let's see what happens from here. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong facing arrow. Undo, undo, quick. I almost made my first mistake of the year. So I can go uh, uh, this direction. Still didn't work. I'm done with arrows forever. Here and back. Next one, 2x minus 6, and that's from x equals x is greater than 0, uh, less than 2. So notice, I'm going to have I'm going to have holes on each of them. I like to plug those values in, find their two endpoints. So when I when I plug the value of 0 in, 0 minus 6 is negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Open circle. Plug the value of 2 in there. Four time, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 6 is negative 2. So I'm going to go to 2, negative 2. Again, open circle. So this is really a slope of up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. But again, they're, they're open circles because of those guys. And now I'm going to connect them, and I'm not going to try to have arrows on them. And there we go. So again, we are from... We're from where this is the graph of 2x minus 6, but I only want the piece from x is greater than 0 to less than 2. And then this is a horizontal line. And I want a horizontal line, and I want to include 2, um, horizontal line of x equals 1, and that's going to be included at 2. So when I'm including, I'm here, and then I have a horizontal line from here and on out, and it would go forever in that direction. I can add my arrows there that I wanted to do before, and we're good to go. So again, y equals one-third x, and that's from zero backwards, zero included. y equals two x minus six, that's from zero to two, from x equals zero to x equals two, so from here to here, not included, and then the horizontal line where um, y is one, but it's only from two on out that direction. Uh, domain of this function, again, uh, we include zero, and then we go here. Domain, again, here is all reals. And the range, how low do we go? It looks like this is going to go down forever, so we're going down forever. And we're coming up to zero. This one's kind of included in there. 
terms of where the graph is. So I have my set of all y such that y is less than or equal to 0, because that's filled in, and it's going to go down forever, so I'm including all of those, and then comma y equals 1, and there we have the range. So the uh, domain you can pretty much tell from here, and you can see it on the graph. We're everywhere, we're here, and then we're in between these two, and then we pick up again there and we go forever. Next one, given the piecewise, write the graph. So I got a y up there, so I'm going to say uh, write the equation, y equals, and we get this big set of chicken lips here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of figure out my intervals. So notice I've got I've got from here to the left. So that's a boundary, and then this is a boundary. So we kind of have our intervals figured out uh, right out of the chute. So let's go with let's go with from x is less than or equal to negative three. So I'm going to put that over here where x is less than or equal to negative 3. And then here's where I'll put my equation. Well, what is this? This is the graph of y equals negative 2. So I put a negative 2 in there. Well, really, we usually put this y down here further. My apologies. Not a big deal. So there's negative 2 if x is less than or equal to negative 3. And then I have this line right here, where which is going from negative 3, open circle not included, to 0 open circle not included. So I'm going to go x is greater than negative 3, less than 0, negative 3. And that's going to be a line, notice I have a y-intercept of 4, and it looks like a slope of negative 1. How do I write a y-intercept of 4? Slope of negative 1, negative x, plus 4. And then the last one is going from 0 included all the way to infinity, so I'm going to have x is greater than or equal to 0, and this is a graph. The y-intercept is 0, slope up one right one, up one right one, up one right one. That's the line y equals x. So again, we can easily see that this is the part of the graph of y equals negative 2, negative x plus 4, and x. And then this is the important part of figuring out where we're at. Again, we have a domain of all reals. Um, some of your homework problems are going to have you skip over one or two, um, so that'll be a little bit different, but the same concept. Range, how low do I go? How high do I go? Set of all y's such that I start with y is equal to negative 2, and then I jump up to 0, and I go up forever. Notice this one doesn't have much to do with it. This one dominates the y is greater than or equal to 0. And that's piecewise functions. So we're done with the piecewise portion. Last one are just a couple of different odd functions. That, or, things that are a little bit differently. When you see this double bracket on this x, and we're just going to do some very basic functions with this, all that it means is greatest integer function is you're going to take the value that is in there and you're going to say what is the integer that is less than or equal to the number. So if I told you, um, if I did this and said 1.2 I want the integer that is less than or equal to that number, it's 1. If I told you 3.8, uh, what is the integer less than or equal to 3.8? 3. So what we're kind of doing is we're cutting the decimal off. You do have to be a little bit careful with negatives, because if I have negative 4.2, the integer that is less than or equal to negative 4.2 that's smaller than, watch your negatives, that is 5. So what we have here is called a step function or greatest integer function. Step function. Because it looks like a set of stairs or step. Because we're, we're, our end result will always be integers. So you can see from 0 to 1 but not including 1. So this, this little line right here is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, all the way up to 0 0.9. Once we get to 1, we jump back up and we're up at 1. This is 1.1 all the way up to 1.9. Till we get to 2, now we go up to 2. So it's the integer that is less than or equal to the number inside there. And then this would be the parent function for it. That is the function that it, it's kind of like y equals x. And then we could move that up and down and left and right as needed. I think the ones we're going to work on is just kind of up and down. Um, and then absolute value. Most of you have seen an absolute value function before. It's just going to look like... Uh, where we have 
Whoops. It's just going to be when we have, it's a V, essentially. And then that could move up and down, because if we put an uh, um, absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. So it's 2 left, 2 up, 3 left, 3 up. So it's a V, and then some things move it around. So let's graph a couple of those, and then we'll, we'll be good enough. If I was doing this one here, 2x plus 1, I might get an xy chart, get a couple of, get a couple of points, xy. And uh, I do need to be careful with where is the tip of my function going to, going to be. So how do I make what's in there equal 0? How do I make 2x plus 1 equal 0? Well, I could solve that, couldn't I? Minus 1, minus 1. 2x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1. Oh, negative 1 half. So we can kind of solve back there for that for that guy. So I know that negative 1 half will yield a y of 0. Well, let's get a few more. 0, 0 will be 1. 0 plus 1 is 1, 1. 2 plus 1 is 3, will be 3. Uh, 2 will be 5. We should probably get some negatives as well. I already had negative 1 half. Let's get negative 1. Negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1. Uh, is negative 1. Take the absolute value. It's 1. And then negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1 is uh, negative 3. Absolute value is 3. Hey, it looks like those ones there. It looks very similar. Um, so let's plot a couple of these points. So I've got uh, 0, 1. 1, 3, 2, 5, and then I have negative 1, uh, 1, and I have 2, 3. Oh, look at that. It's very symmetrical. Coincidence? I think not. And now you can see why this negative 1 half is in play, and I wouldn't even necessarily have needed it, because in order to complete that V, I could tell that I have to come right down there. So then we grab our trusty straight edge and connect the dots, la, 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 and we're rolling. And there's my graph of the absolute value. So again, you'll, ask, you'll be asked to do a couple of easy ones, just moved up, down, left, right. You um, can make a chart and know that they all have to end up looking like a V. Last one for today, integer. So we're going to, we have the, we're going to take the, integer here that is less than or equal to. So the the um, integer, greatest int integer that is less than or equal to the number in there. So what we're talking about is if I have, have from 0, 0 plus 4 gets me up here. And then I will also have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And then once I get to 1, I have an open circle, and 1 plus 4 is 5. And now I'll go, now I'm at x equals 1. And so now all of those numbers, 1.1, 1.2, all round back down to 1 plus 4 is 5. Open circle, jump up. Open circle, jump up, open circle, up, open circle, jump back, and you'll see this pattern every time that we're moving these things around. Open circle, jump back, open circle, jump back, and that would be plenty. Uh, there's also a, uh, there's an example of a step function on page 102 in your book you can take care of. And then I think you just have to graph one of these, and it's very similar to this one, where it's rounded and then it's moved down. So my ones got moved up four here. Everything got moved up four because of that plus four. So just want the idea of the step function. Um, uh, most important things from today that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to grab graph paper for this homework assignment because you're going to have to graph some piecewise functions, do them in different pieces, and you'll have to take a look at a graph, and you'll have to write the piecewise function as shown, and then a couple of simple absolute value and step functions. So that's all that we have for today. You should have your homework uh, to work on from um, 2 5. You have the linear regression problems, um, and, uh, and uh, your 2 4 problems as well, so there's plenty to do. Have a great weekend.